So for this problem, um, the I'm going to go ahead and try and read. I always try to read first and label the picture as much as I can. So what we're going to say here is a piece of cardboard measuring 11 inches by 13 inches. So the very first thing I'm going to do is say, okay, the, if the piece of cardboard is 13 inches, that means the long side would be 13 and the short side would be, that would be 11 inches, right? All right, so we look, go ahead and label that up. Now, we're going to make a open top box. So we know a box generally looks something like this. And what they're saying is we have cardboard on all sides except the top. So when we fold it up, we don't need to worry about having a roof. All right. And so we're going to have an open top box by cutting squares with the side length x. Now, they're telling me it's a square, so therefore what they mean is, and they've actually already labeled it for me, but what they're saying is this line that we cut out right here and here are a square, which means both sides are the same length. So therefore, they both have to be x, which kind of makes sense, because if you imagine folding this box top up, when you fold along this dotted line here and, and so on and so forth, this is going to end up being the height of the box. And when you go and li lift up both sides, the heights have to be the same. Otherwise, the sides of the box wouldn't be the same. They would be uneven. Um, so that makes sense to me. Okay. So even if they didn't tell me it was squares, we could have in figured that out just through logic. All right. So we got the idea. We know that the whole box is 13 by 11. We know we're going to cut out these corners. So this corner's gone, this corner's gone, this corner's gone, this corner's gone. We're going to cut those out and fold up the remaining sides. Now they want us to find a volume for the box in terms of x. All right, so whenever a, a problem says to me um, to do something, I always look for keywords. One keyword here is finding a volume. So then I have to relate to things I already know. I know on a box, we generally call it length times width times height, and the volume of a box would be volume equals length times width times height. Right, so I now have a formula to kind of work with. So now the next trick here, though, is they don't want it with L's, W's, and H's. They don't want it in terms of L's, W, and H's. They tell us they want it in terms of X. So what I need to do, where my brain goes, is I say, okay, I need to come up with a relationship, something that relates the length, the width, and the height, and they can all be done individually, uh, to that variable X. So then I have to go back and really define to myself, what is X? Well, x was the length of the cuts, and as we said before, these length, this length here, well, that should be the same as the length along the other side, right, when we cut it out. So therefore, the height of the box is really x. So therefore, that's an easy substitution right there. I can immediately jump straight to this and say, okay, there, now I've got x's. Now I've got to come up with ways of getting rid of the l's and the w's. Okay, so, hmm. Um, and if that's enough to get you going, I recommend pause the video, stop the video, try it on your own. Don't just co follow and copy. That is the worst thing to do when you're learning how to do word problems. you got to try it on your own. You're robbing yourself of thinking. Okay, so now let's rob you of thinking. Um, <laughs> the I need to come up with a length. Now, I know the whole length of the box is 13 inches, okay? But what we're going to have left after we fold it up isn't going to be 13 inches because we're cutting off a bit. Well, how much are we cutting off? Um, so let's go ahead and say, let's write a length equation. So we know the length of the original box was 13, right? So, but this, this L does not describe the whole box. This describes this piece right here. So we know that the length and then plus this little piece here and plus this little piece here. So length plus 2X should equal that whole thing would be 13 inches. So now, is there some way that I can come up with an equation for L where I can then sub that into my other equation? I can go ahead and fill that in. Um, <clears throat> and I th I'm hoping you're saying, yeah, absolutely. We, If we subtract 2x from here, subtract 2x from here, that'll give me length is equal to 13 minus 2x. And therefore, I know all right, if my length is equal to 13, uh, 13 minus 2x, I can fill that in right there. So now I have a new equation. The volume equals... 13 minus 2x times w times x. I am now super duper close. We've gotten our length equation. Now all we need to do is come up with a width equation to get rid of my w, and I will have what I need. So I am going to stop there because 
it really is the exact same thing as what we just did for the length. So same logic, make sure you go back and understand the logic and that will get you the width. All right, so next, next, the problem is asking us to, um, so once you get that equation and you type it in here, you've got an equation to work with. You have a, a function that's in terms of x. And now it's saying find the value of for x that will maximize the volume. Now, this is calculus, so if you get through any problem without doing a derivative, you probably did it wrong, right? All right, so ask yourself, how do I use derivatives to find the a maximum, right? And go back and say, all right, use those steps, use that process that we use to find maximums using calculus, and that will guide you through the rest of the problem. Just use your equation you developed up above. Okay, I hope that helps for this, this problem.